What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Standing Room Only podcast episode number 15. 15. February 4th, already a month into the new year. Uh, the Super Bowl happened this weekend, trade deadline this weekend for the NBA. Uh, the next couple episodes should be pretty interesting with what we're going to be talking about. As always, you guys can follow us uh, on uh, Twitter and Instagram at SROnlyPod. And you can follow us on our personal pages at the Healy Six for me. For me, it's going to be I Goose with four O's. Again, don't ask why. And of course, uh, we have our YouTube channel, uh, Standing Room Only Podcast. Uh, go ahead, subscribe, and then make sure, of course, Spotify and Apple. Uh, if you have Apple Music or Apple Podcasts, go ahead. We are Standing Room Only Podcast on there as well. Uh, go ahead, show some support, download. Yeah, make sure to download the episode on Apple and subscribe and also leave a rating yeah i get those ratings up it'll help us out on the charts and everything so if you guys are there it takes like two seconds just to hit the the rating button and you give us amount of stars you don't have to type in any reviews or like anything for it so yeah just just leave us a rating yeah or if you want to type in a review about how great we are or about um the how, knowledge that we the have. knowledge that we have or if you're on our YouTube channel and you're like, man, these are some good looking dudes, whatever it may be, go <laughs> ahead and uh, leave that comment. Or if you think we're horrible, it doesn't matter. Uh, go ahead and show some support. And, um, you know, we, we really appreciate all any and all feedback. So yeah, we're going to start off with the NFL this week. We're going to start off with the awards. Then we'll work our way into the Super Bowl. Uh, the, the awards were pretty spot on, I would say, besides maybe one or two. But Lamar Jackson, unanimous MVP, the oh, yeah. second second time ever, which Tom Brady was the other unanimous one, which is recent year too. He won it like a couple of years ago or something. Yeah, yeah. Tom Brady being the only other unanimous, it's not easy because there's always. I mean, even for Lamar Jackson to get it unanimously, which I think he deserved. Um, there's always that one other player like Christian McCaffrey, like Russell could've, Wilson could have gotten a couple Russell of votes. Wilson, exactly. I'm surprised he didn't. Um, it's just regular season award. Lamar Jackson just did not look back at all, at all. I mean, in the playoffs, mm-hmm. obviously, you know, they had a. A tough loss against Tennessee. He didn't perform as great as he did every other game, but that game doesn't matter. Uh, For regular season purposes, I'm not going to argue that award. I'm not going to argue that it's unanimous because he definitely had my vote. Um, But, but yeah, as you mentioned, it could have gone a couple of votes here and there to McCaffrey or Russell Wilson, but uh, definitely a good choice there. And then we had the Offensive Player of the Year, Michael Thomas. And, uh, yeah, Michael Thomas had an amazing season. He broke the catch record in the year. He had, I don't know how many receptions or, like, uh, receiving yards he had. He had more than 1,000. But Yeah, he actually had, so, 1,700, uh, actually 1,725 yards receiving. Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, 149 catches, uh, nine touchdowns. I mean, that, that right there, just that stat line is, I mean, it's huge. Yeah, he helped out that team a lot. I don't even know how many drops he had. I feel like he had one, maybe two drops because he had that record going throughout the season mm-hmm. where he didn't have any drops, and then he finally dropped one midway through um, on a pass that he should have caught. Um, but overall, one of the best seasons I've seen from a receiver, um, the catches that he made were he made look easy. He had some very difficult grabs. Um, ultimately though, he averaged, you know, about 12 yards, a, uh, a catch, which is really good. Uh, I mean, well-deserved offense player of the year. Definitely. Yeah. The amount of drops he had were, I don't know if his catch percentage this year was, uh, he was targeted 185 times had 149 receptions. Uh, I don't know if football reference, his catch percentage was 80. So that's only including targets. It doesn't necessarily include drops. I don't, I don't necessarily see it on the on the stat sheet here. Let's so. see. It looks like for this year, three drops. 
So not bad out of 185 targets. Not bad at all. So, yeah, so he won Offensive Player of the Year. Uh, again, not going to argue that. He definitely, I mean, receivers generally don't win MVP. They can't win MVP. I don't even know if there's been a receiver to win MVP. Um, it's just not a category, an award that they win. Um, so you give it to, for Offensive Player of the Year, you usually go running back or receiver, in this case, Michael Thomas. Could have gone to Christian McCaffrey, but mm-hmm. the, the year Michael Thomas had for a wide receiver, breaking the record, you just can't pass him up on that award. I think Lamar was number two and got like a decent amount of votes. Yeah, Lamar's going to be up there again. I mean, being a quarterback and going over a thousand yards uh, rushing and the amount of uh, touchdowns that he had. I think so. Mahomes was number three, maybe. I'm I'm not too sure on that exact order, but McCaffrey wasn't top three. I don't think. Uh, we had Defensive Player of the Year, Stephen or Stefan Gilmore, deserved it. He was, a, he was the best corner in the league. That's like another one where you don't necessarily see a cornerback win Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, you more you most likely think it's gonna be, uh, like a linebacker. The past couple of years, it's been Aaron Donald. Then you had Khalil Mack, J.J. Watt, Keekley, Watt, Suggs. The last cornerback was Charles Woodson in two thousand nine. You had Paul Malu the year after that. So it's been almost ten years since a defensive back has won. They've won a decent bit throughout history, but generally it's someone on the line who gets a lot of sacks or a linebacker who just is the leader of the team. Yeah, yeah. So J.J. Watt has three Defensive Player of the Year awards. Aaron Donald has two. He won back-to-back before this year's voting. Uh, Khalil Mack obviously has one. But, yeah, as you mentioned, um, it's transitioned more into these big guys who – can get you know however many sacks they can get um i'm surprised i don't see uh michael strahan in there i'm pretty sure he within is. does he have one i think he's got one yeah he has one in 2001 okay back in 01 so because that was another one who i mean 20 and a half sacks or 21 sacks there's a record season. for most in the year yeah so and then uh we had the coach of the year john harborough harbo uh he definitely deserved it that team was ridiculous. He got the number one seed. They beat a lot of good teams this year. And, yeah, I don't, I don't see, like, any other coach. Maybe you could have had Kyle Shanahan win it because he turned – that team last year won, like, four games. And this year they won 13, 12, yeah. 13. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were 13 and 3. Um, yeah, John Harbaugh, for him to get that, I mean, definitely well-deserved. Uh, the team was okay last year. Um, I mean, did Lamar Jackson help? Yes. But in how they dominated and their schemes and how well they played against really good teams and to get put in the position that they were in, uh, they won, what, 14-2 and two on the season? Mm, yeah. So, or like 13-3. and three. I think 14-2. I'm pretty sure it was 14-2, and two, which is not easy. And they started off 2-2. Two and two. Yeah. So that they – he definitely deserved that. He's, he, I mean, he's generally a good coach. He's had mm-hmm. this team in the big dance before. Um, he's won before. Uh, you know, he obviously didn't have that good of a season last year, turned it around, and usually those are the coaches that end up winning. It's like they compare it to the year before. Um, and, you know, going from, I don't even know if they were an 8-8 eight and eight team last year, uh, maybe, maybe a 500 or just above 500 the ravens yeah to go yeah, to 14 think, yeah, yeah to be 14 and 2 like that's and be dominant yeah well. dominant every single exactly and then there was um let's see the offensive rookie of the year kyler oh, murray god this is this is the one that a lot of people thought was wrong and i think both of us agree that josh jacobs should have won it yeah. over over him yeah, we sat there during the Super Bowl, and I remember you know reading it earlier in the day, and I was like, Kyler Murray won Rookie of the Year, and he didn't really do shit. They had, first of all, Josh Jacobs. I know he only played in 13 games. He missed a few games. Mm-hmm. Um, he had 242 carries for 1150 on the ground. That's almost five yards a carry, seven touchdowns. 
just imagine if he played three more games. He'd have over 1,300 yards, potentially 10 touchdowns. And then you look at Kyler Murray. Now, Kyler Murray is not a bad quarterback. Yeah. He's not bad at all. He almost had 4,000 yards, 20 touchdowns, 12 picks. It's just he played more games, and that's – he got sacked 48 times this year. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's literally three – did he play all 16 games? Yeah. So that's three times a game? Mm-hmm. So that's a lot. That's so, not even the amount of times he's gotten hit. Exactly. So – I guess, you know, we'll let it slide. I still think Josh Jacobs is the true offensive rookie of the year. Um, Kyler Murray, is he going to be good down the road? Is he a great quarterback now? Sure. And then we had defensive rookie of the year, Nick Bosa. Probably the best pick in last year's draft. It's just he couldn't go number one because uh, the Cardinals went with Kyler Murray. They needed a quarterback. Even though they drafted Josh Rosen the year before. <laughs> yeah, Josh Rosen was a... Uh, <clears throat> they were testing the waters with him, clearly. Obviously, they were okay to trade him away. So, uh, But yeah, so for Nick Bosa, rookie rookie season, had a uh, combined total of 47 tackles. Um, 47 tackles, uh, 9 sacks, even had an interception. Uh, we saw him in the Super Bowl. He was... Causing hecticness. Is hecticness a word? We're going to make it a word if it's not. It could be. Um, you know, in the backfield for the Chiefs offense, for uh, Pat Mahomes, for anybody that tried to block him, he was in there. Um, well-deserved uh, product from Ohio State. <clears throat> um, obviously the brother of Joey Bosa, who, who is also a monster uh, over in San Diego for the char- or uh, excuse me, for Los Angeles Chargers. Um, who was a great rookie as well the year before. Um, obviously, there's something in that bloodline uh, that, you know, they, they, they developed good football players in their family, but well-deserved. And then there was the comeback player of the year. With Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill. Just- Interesting decision. The one that – this is another one that probably should have been a different player. Jimmy Garoppolo. He got hurt last year. Came back this year, played pretty well, led that 49ers team to 13 wins. 13 and 3, yeah. Like, I, I, Ryan Tannehill, though, he had the lasting impression, though, carrying, getting traded, one, and then winning like seven games with Tennessee and putting them in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. Tannehill, well, for one, was that was the best move Tennessee made, was to bench Mariota finally. Tannehill, who was kind of, we thought, falling off in his career. Because there was a couple of years early with Miami where you were like, oh, Tannehill's actually not bad. And then all of a sudden they're like, all right, let's put Tannehill in for Tennessee and see what he can do. So he managed the game well. Uh, He obviously led them to an X number of victories to get them into the playoffs. Um, Who's to say Derrick Henry really truly didn't contribute more than him? Uh, so, like you said, for comeback player of the year, Jimmy G definitely should have grabbed that. And then the last big one is the Walter Payton Man of the Year. Can't really give judgment on this, but Calais Campbell, Calais Campbell won it. He joins uh, a great list of players. Last year, it was Chris Long, you had JJ Watt, Eli Manning, Larry Fitzgerald. Anquan Bolden, Thomas Davis, Tillman, Jason Wynn. A lot, a very good list. Drew Brees won it back in 2006. And for the rest of his career, whatever team he plays for, he is going to have that patch on his jersey, which I think is great. Uh, he did a lot of good work, which is why he won that award. And he gets recognized for it now whenever he plays. He's going to have that patch just like Drew Brees has on all his jerseys. I think Eli won it one year. So they get to wear yeah. it every year after that? Is that how yeah. that works? Yeah, okay. every every game they get it on their jersey. Okay, so that that's that's a good award. I mean, personally, again, like you said, you can't really judge like, oh, I would have went with this guy or that guy. Because yeah. we don't, I mean, of course, they show what they do, but we don't really know what they're doing. But yeah. for somebody, you know, it's it's always a good, you know, award to hand out to somebody that's really trying. Because, I mean, you always see a lot of players doing good things. Um, and obviously, they're going to continue to do great things. And uh, it's nice to see that they have this type of an award for people who do things off the field for the community or 
you know, those in need. Mm -hmm. Uh, So definitely shout out to Kalias Campbell for that. Um, I guess we could say well-deserved award. Um, And then uh, I think one last thing we should touch on for awards, the, uh, the Hall of Fame. Oh yeah, the Hall, the Hall of, Fame. of Fame. So let's give it. they jam packed everything before the Super Bowl. Yeah, they they truly did. Um, I personally, growing up with, well, let's just announce it. So we have Steve Atwater, we have Isaac Bruce, uh, Steve Hutchinson, Edron James, and Troy Polamalu. I grew up watching and idolizing Edron James, coach oh, yeah. running back, Troy Polamalu, jumping over the line of scrimmage, timing plays perfectly all the time and Isaac Bruce I mean I don't know like Steve Atwater I believe is a little bit older generation from me at least yeah. I know he put up great numbers um but shout out to the class of 2020 well deserved um it's nice to see Troy Polamalu in there um he was one of my favorite defensive players of all time at least one of my favorite safeties yeah and I can't believe he's already been out of the game this long yeah uh he was always great to use in Madden he was all over the field in Madden. And also in real life, In real too. life. That one play that, I think it was against Pat McAfee, he jumped over the center. He was great at timing snaps. Yeah, he did it a few times. There was, a couple t- there was one time he did it on a fourth and one, I believe, at the goal line. And he jumps it. And I, I, don't, I don't remember if he hit the quarterback or if it was the running back who just got the handoff. But I do remember him being able to jump over the line and jump the snap so well. Mm-hmm. And all you see is just this guy with a Loch Ness of hair just flowing behind him, destroying, just blowing up plays. And you know what? Being a, as a Steeler, that's what you like to see because Steelers oh, yeah. historically are usually grind, you know, grind tough players and good uh, defensively. Yeah, yeah, great defensive players. And Troy Polamalu, I'm, I'm glad he got voted in. And like you said, for him to be out of the league that long to where he got voted in, I'm surprised. Where did time go? Uh, you said Isaac Bruce was. One of them. Yeah. I think that was a great decision. I think he's been eligible for a few years now. He got, he was a part of that, uh, what they call that offense with, uh, with the Rams. Yeah. With Torrey Holt. So there's Torrey Holt, Falk. Isaac Bruce, Marshall Falk, Kurt, and Warner. Kurt Warner. What was that offense called? Uh, I don't even, let's see. But like, all time, Isaac Bruce is. Uh, a pretty good receiver. He's he like great. top ten in receiving yards all time. He's he seems like more of like an underrated like Hall of Fame pick. The greatest show on turf. Yeah, the greatest show on turf because that offense was so good. Azir Hakim, I forgot about him too. He was fast. Yeah, they had. I think even when Mark Bulger took over at quarterback at one point, they still were putting up numbers. But I just remember, and like you, I mean, you referred to Madden. I remember when. Torrey Holt and Isaac Bruce being the two best receivers in the game on one team. That was like, that was nuts back in the day. Now you're getting two great receivers on teams and, uh, you know, usually you match it with a good running back, but uh, definitely well-deserved for Isaac Bruce. Torrey Holt, I don't think he's in yet. I think he retired after Isaac Bruce, but he'll be the next Ram to get in. Uh, yeah, Isaac Bruce retired in 2009. Let's check out when Torrey Holt. Torrey Holt retired the same year. Oh, he did. So they both retired the same year. Yeah, he's not in the Hall of Fame. He has 2,000 yards less than almost uh, 17 touchdowns less than Isaac Bruce. Okay. So he was great. He uh, played from 99 to 2009. Bruce played from 94. So he played a few more years, racked up more yards. Maybe we'll see him eventually in the Hall of Fame, but that that duo right there, they were great. Yeah. Uh, did they both play on the Super Bowl team? Yeah. Yeah, they did. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, yeah well-deserved for everybody on there. Edron James obviously was great, too, playing with uh, Peyton Manning and and that awesome team. They had Reggie Wayne, Marvin Harrison. Um, those guys obviously are going to be Hall of Famers, or if not yet. Um, Edron James was a beast. He was great. This is a guy who had dreads, who would get his dreads pulled out because it was part of the uniform. Mm-hmm. And he didn't care. He would literally run while getting his dread, like a piece of his hair pulled out from the back of his helmet. And, you know, as frustrating as it is, I would assume, I mean, anybody getting their hair pulled out, he still 
grinded as a running back, put up great numbers, obviously won with the Colts and Peyton Manning. Um, so that was pretty cool to see him in there as well. I don't know too much about Steve Hutchinson, the guard. Um, I just know in Madden, he was like a 98 overall almost every year. Yeah, there's he, always he was one. a solid O-line. There's nothing else I can really say about him. But I just know he was outstanding as a lineman. He was a left guard. He was a guard throughout his whole career. He had, let's see, Steve Hutchinson. He was a seven-time Pro Bowler, five-time All-Pro, played from 2001 to 2012. He allowed, um, I don't know if it shows how many how many sacks he had or, like, allowed, but he, he was a beast. He was definitely good throughout his whole career. He had a couple uh, fumble recoveries. <laughs> I guess that's a good stat. I wonder if he uh, let those guys in to hit the quarterback. But Man, they they don't necessarily have stats for like sacks a lot, but he was a beast. He was as I stated, seven time Pro Bowl or five time All Pro. If you get more than like at least three All Pros, that's good for a football player. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's pretty much the important awards. Um, I mean, there was like the the Bud Light Celly of the Year best celebration went to Seattle Seahawks for their receiving core performing bye 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 on a celebration. I love the celebrations that the teams are doing. I'm glad that they don't get penalized for it. They're yeah. having fun. The defense will get a turnover. They go. They they strike a pose in the end yeah. zone. We saw it in the Super Bowl. They allow players to do that. The only thing that's still up for grabs are the shoes. They still get kind of penalized for that. For the uniform, yeah. We, we, might, we might see a change in that, but I'm glad that celebrations are there because it gets people wanting to watch the game and see what happens. It's entertain- It's more entertainment. Mm-hmm. It's more entertainment, and it makes the other team a little salty and maybe come out a little bit harder. Um, but, but yeah, so that's pretty much it for rewards, for the accolades, for the Hall of Fame. Shout out to everybody that's winning all the things. Um, I think we can transition over. There was a there was a big game that just happened. I heard. I read in the news. They call it like the Super Bowl. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, the big game. The big one. So, obviously, the Chiefs came out on top. They win 31-20. to 20. They covered their spread of a whopping one and a half point. They did pretty well. <laughs> um, personally, I don't know about you, I think overall the 49ers played way better than the Chiefs. Yeah, way the, better. The Chiefs had that final six-minute stretch. And ultimately won the game there, but the the defense was playing well. Patrick Mahomes didn't look good. He did not look good at all. And like, yeah, he he made some good throws here and there, but it was uncharacteristic of him to make like bad throws. They were noticeably bad. Yeah, every interception was his fault, including the dropped pass. And I don't, I hope they did not rule it as a drop pass by Tyreek Hill that got thrown behind him. I know they say if your hands are on the football, you should be able to reel it in, but how fast he is and to be able to come back and try to grab a ball like that, it's not likely for that type of player uh, who runs faster than my car goes. All right, so he uh, definitely, Mahomes, had it rough, 26-42, uh, completed 62% of his passes, threw for under 300 yards going into the game the over under for pat mahomes i believe was 305 and a half passing yards i thought for sure it was either going to be a shootout or the chiefs were going to play from behind and he would end up having a drive with 80 yards which he kind of did um but he passed ended up passing for under 300 yards um he got sacked four times he got sacked four times in this game and i'm pretty sure i mentioned it last week If the 49ers can disrupt Pat Mahomes, force a turnover, in this case they forced two, hit Pat Mahomes, sack him, which they did, force the fumble that Pat Mahomes recovered, then they would be able to keep it as a close ball game if not be able to manage the ball game, which they did. Yeah. Um, Pat Mahomes also, the over-under for his rushing yards in the game was like 30... Four, I think he was at 38 yards, and then at the end of the game, he would kneel the ball a couple times. And he went down to 29 yards. Yeah, he did that to waste time. That was interesting too. Uh, <laughs> so he had the over for his rushing yards, and just those knees hurt. They hurt him at the end for everyone that bet the over. 
I'm sorry. If you bet over at all in this game, you lost. Pretty much. You yeah. lost. You might actually the over, if there was an over-under on Jimmy G's completions, it, I said he was going to complete 15 when I was watching the game. And then he obviously got a couple towards the end of the game, so he ended up with 20. Um, two interceptions. Uh, he only got sacked once. Overall, do you talk about the point total too? Yeah, the point total. Yeah, the over under was, was what 55? 50, 52 and a half. It was a 52 and a half. And they ended up with 51 points in the game. 51 points. And I thought for sure each team was, I thought it was going to go just over. So mm-hmm. it went just under. So again, if you bet over on anything, probably didn't win. Well, yeah, it, it could have gone over if uh, George Kittle wasn't called for that pass interference. That was a good call, though. Yeah, it's it's one of those where he didn't need. I feel like he had position. Yeah, the and ball he has was the perfect. size. He has the size. I don't think he needed to push off, but it was clear as day when he extended his arm that it was offensive pass interference. I know a lot, a lot of San Francisco fans were upset. Twitter was upset. But that's just, you have to call that, especially mm-hmm. historically when the refs dropped the ball mm-hmm. when it came to... He did it twice, I think, too. Yeah. Like, the first arm he had out was fine, and then he pushed again. Yeah, and at that point, like I said, it wasn't necessary for him to do that. So for the refs to call it, good call. And for the no call, there was one, or I'm sorry, there was a call uh, defensive pass interference as well. Um, on the 49ers that Mahomes chucked up. And I know the rule changed where the defender had a face guard, like where he had a turn for the football, they changed that. So I, I was kind of indifferent. I don't know if they really needed to call that pass interference call. They did. The Chiefs obviously ended up scoring, which, as you said, within a six-minute span, they scored 21 points, which mm. was huge. And that's what we know about Pat Mahomes and this Chiefs offense. They can score at will. When they want to, I don't know. I I don't know either. I thought that this defense that they're going up against would not allow that, and they just got the momentum and they scored three quick times. Yeah, their defense stepped up, forced a couple punts, and then Pat Mahomes led them to the the promised land. And that's and, you know that's that just goes to show. Yeah, did he have a bad game for a Pat Mahomes game? Sure. But that's the type of guy who, again, was last year MVP, who is probably going to win MVP a couple of more times in his career, as long as he doesn't get hurt, right, knock on wood, who in times when they need him the most, the clutch factor set in. He was able to make the right passes. He was able to scramble out. He was able to hit Tyreek Hill on a huge bomb late in the game. That Cracked the game open, I would say. It was a huge play. I think it was like third and 12, third and 15. I could be wrong. Could have been second down, but he threw one up. Yeah. That Tyreek Hill was, was just wide, wide open, open, but the throw was perfect. It mm-hmm. was right to him. Defenders nowhere near him. Perfect throw. Pat Mahomes did what he does best. And um, the run game was well established. Um, I think overall, the fourth quarter. For the San Francisco 49ers to not score on this Chiefs defense, mm-hmm. that it made a huge difference. I mean, obviously, it made all the difference. 21 points. The Chiefs scored more points in the fourth quarter than the 49ers did in the whole game. Yeah. In, in a six-minute six span. Mm-hmm. In a six-minute span. And the thing is, is like they scored with six minutes to go. The, Ch- or the 49ers still had a three-point lead. And they were unable to run out a majority of that clock. Kyle Shanahan, if you guys don't know, he was the (laughs) offensive coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons. And that offense with the Atlanta Falcons, they passed the ball a bunch instead of running it and running out the clock. I get that you don't want to play safe and you want to go for like the throat of your opponent. But he he got fooled twice. They passed the ball, I think, 12 times or something in, like, the fourth quarter or, like, that final span instead of running the ball more. I think they ran the ball, like, twice, which is a big part of their game. That You're talking about the 49ers. Yeah. yeah. And actually, you know what? Um, looking at that, too, the run game. So they were running pretty well. Raheem Mostert. Yeah. Mostert. 
twelve fifty eight, right? He had a touchdown in the game, twelve rushes, and last week you ran him thirty times against Green Bay. How many did Coleman have? Uh, Tevin Coleman had five, and actually Tevin Coleman had the first. He started the game. Yeah, and I even said, "How are they going to win? You running back by committee." Because you're going to wear out this Chiefs defense, who isn't that great anyways, and you're going to manage the clock. And if your defense makes stops, which they did, you're going to win the football game. But then the fourth quarter comes, and you're not going to run the football. Uh, Kyle Shanahan, you made this same mistake in the Super Bowl against the Patriots. Run the football. You have a great, probably a better running game now than what he had before with Devontae Freeman. And the defense. And the, de- the defense is, you're the best defense in the NFL. And one thing to point out, 49ers could have won the game. And this is the difference between Jimmy G and Pat Mahomes. Jimmy G is a good quarterback. Is he worth how much he's getting paid? No. He's a game manager. Hell no. Jimmy G with a minute and 39 seconds left. It was 24 to 20, Chiefs lead, right? Emmanuel Sanders doing what Emmanuel Sanders does best when he's on. Gets open downfield. Overthrown. A t- wide open touchdown. Overthrown. They cannot, and they end up not converting on their fourth down. He hits that pass. They end up taking the lead by three, and they force Mahomes with more pressure. Because that next drive, they scored on a 39 yard run, which probably shouldn't have ran it in, but that's a whole different story. By missing that pass, that just goes to show right there, there's a difference between good quarterback and elite. Obviously, the elite quarterback scores 21 points in six minutes, and an okay quarterback gets you to that point where you should be able to win but doesn't make the throws. Mm -hmm. And also good coaching decisions. Shout out to Andy Reid winning his first Super Bowl, 21 years of being a head coach, and that's the longest it's ever taken someone to win like their first one. Yeah. So shout out to Andy Reid. His balls were huge in that game. Two yeah. fourth and ones, one being at the five yard line where they could have taken three points early yeah. in the game. I was yelling. Remember that? I was yeah. like, take the points. Take the because you want points against this defense. Especially early in the game. It was yep. like their first drive or something like that. And Andy Reid's like, all right, we're going to go for it. We're, we're going to pull a page out of that Baltimore Ravens book. We're going to play the odds. And we're going to try to convert and they did do something about this. And they did. They ran it up the middle on one fourth and one with Pat Mahomes. Got it. Um, that that boot option play where they scored, where he had the fake toss. Yeah. To get the defender. I like Pat Mahomes. That's all I got to say. Um, but yeah, shout out to Andy Reid. My man got his cheeseburger finally. Um, super proud of him. He's a great coach. One of the most winningest coaches to never win until now. Um, obviously coached some great teams, uh, coached uh, T.O. and that Eagles team to a Super Bowl, obviously lost to the Patriots. Um, but definitely uh, this Chiefs team, there's a lot more to look forward to. They they can only improve on their defense. Their offense is already great. Um, I don't know, were you satisfied, satisfied with this game? Yeah, even though I was rooting for the Chiefs, if the 49ers won, I would it have, was a good game. It was a great game. It was uh, definitely a lot better than last year. And then the year before that, was that was that when the F- F- Eagles played? Or was that when Eagles were 2017? Yeah, you had... Or was that the 28-3 the to 3 game? So you had, um, obviously last year we had that horrible, horrible, horrible game. Patriots-Rams, 13-3. to 3. One of the worst games I've ever watched. Uh, the year before was the Eagles beating the Patriots, uh, Nick Foles MVP. Um, and then, of course, the year before that was Patriots coming <laughs> back down 24. Was it 24 to 7? 24 to 3? 28 3. Or 28 3. Uh, Tom Brady MVP of that game to beat the Falcons. So, yeah, Patriots finally out of the Super Bowl for the first time in three years. Great franchise, but it was good. You had the pretty much a face of the NFL. Going up against one of the best defenses and popular popular teams in NFL history, the 49ers. They have such a great team history that uh, the game was great. The views for the game were amazing. They were up this year. A uh, fun fact, 
during the halftime show, they rose a little more, and then they went back down after the halftime show. So everybody wanted to see <laughs> J-Lo and Shakira do their thing, which shout out to J-Lo and Shakira both. Um, I applaud you. That's all I got to say. Her hips um, don't lie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, pretty much um, they, I think they're, they are the MVPs of the game. But, um, you know, they gave Pat Mahomes the MVP at the end. Which I feel like, yeah, you have to. He's the quarterback. He's the leader. I don't necessarily see anyone else. Everybody was saying Damian Williams, but like mm. everybody, pump your brakes a little bit. Let's look at the stats. Yeah, he had over a hundred yards on the ground. He had two touchdowns. I'm letting you know right now that garbage touchdown does not count. Is if I'm the 49ers and you get that first down, I'm not saying they let him score, but my mission is to let you score because I have three timeouts. Besides that garbage time 38-yard touchdown, he only had 70 yards on the ground, one touchdown, played a hell of a game. I'm not taking anything away from Damian Williams. But Pat Mahomes, even though he made some bad plays, he also made some great plays and made that game possible for them. Fun fact about Pat Mahomes, this year the Chiefs and Pat Mahomes were 5-0 and when the Chiefs were trailing by 10 or more. And that was like the whole playoffs. Yeah. They were down. And you said it last week. If I see the Chiefs and Mahomes go down early, I don't think they're going to come back. To be fair, they did come back, but realistically, 49ers lost the game themselves. Yeah. Bad play calling towards the end. Who do you think would have gotten it if the 49ers, like let's say they won 24 to 20 or 27 to 24? Uh, who, who do you think would have won it from them? I think... Uh, I would say, honestly, Nick Bosa forced a fumble, got a sack. He had five tackles. He had two two assists. Okay. Um, he overall had a great game. There was somebody else had a crazy good game. <laughs> Kyle Juszczyk, the fullback, the fullback almost, if hit he, a touchdown. He, he almost, almost scored, two. Yeah, if he would have scored that second touchdown. Have there ever been a fullback to an MVP? I don't think so. Maybe Franco Harris. Maybe back, way but back in the day. I, I don't know if he's considered a running back or whatever. I just know on Madden they consider him a fullback. But he has a lot of rushing yards in his career. But, yeah, Kyle Juszczyk, he was the, the X factor for what it seemed. Yeah, they that 49ers team and Jimmy Garoppolo, they executed so well. Uh, again, the first three quarters, even though they didn't blow up the scoreboard at all. They only put up 20 points, which really is nothing nowadays especially on a Chiefs defense. Um, overall, it was a good offensive performance. Um, if the 49ers won, it's hard. I mean, Debo Samuel had a hell of a game too. He had five catches for 40 yards. Uh, he also had a huge run for 30 yards. Now, if he, didn't, he didn't score, so I don't know if he'd get the MVP, but mm. it would have been tough. It would have been a hard deciding factor on who wins MVP in that game. Um, nobody receiving-wise dominated. I think it would have just been Garoppolo because I think one of his interceptions would have been flipped with a touchdown. He would have had two touchdowns, two or one pick. Pat Mahomes had two touchdowns, two picks. So yeah, I, I think it would have been Garoppolo. Uh, it doesn't matter though because the 49ers didn't win. It was just a fun conversation to bring up though and see like who played well and who would have gotten it. Let's say if if it flipped, but can yeah. I, so if your team like what if I put up. 300 rushing yards, three touchdowns, but my team loses. Am I still not the MVP of the game? Yeah, I I don't see an MVP ever being on the losing team. Because he's not valuable. He's still lost, right? <laughs> uh, I guess. The only time you've ever seen it in history was Jerry West. He lost the finals, but won finals MVP. You probably could have seen LeBron James win it LeBron, a few years yeah. ago. but yeah, against Golden State. But he lost a series, and like I guess you, you can't be like, oh, congrats on losing. You were the best player in the series. It just, it, it's not. It's so, like throwing it, salt on the wound, like, right? I guess it should happen. I guess the, the best player should win it. Which no in matter, this case. No honestly, matter who wins or loses. Yeah, no, I agree. I completely agree. But um, I don't think it will change. Yeah, no, that's not going to change. It was just uh, me thinking out loud there. Pat Mahomes, definitely well-deserved. Um, the quietest, least talked about, best quarterback in the league, uh, next to, obviously, Lamar Jackson. Pat Mahomes overall, arm-wise. No, he's good. He's great. Lamar Jackson's great, too, but his his legs opens up 
a plethora mm-hmm. of options for him. Mahomes does have legs, too. He's not afraid to put his head down into a defender, as we saw. Um, he took a shot in the game that ended up hitting the, the defender. It was Ward. Ended up going out for the game. He rocked, at least what I look like, rocked hey, he Pat Mahomes. The ball. He fumbled, but he actually put his helmet on the ball, so Pat Mahomes was fine. Um, but, but yeah, so overall, good game. I mean, I had fun. I hope everybody watching had fun. Halftime show was pretty cool. Um, but, yeah, now the season's over. Now it's going to roll into the free agency, the draft, which we'll talk about as the time comes forward. Um, but, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. On to the NBA news to finish out today. Now, there was a trade. I think Luke Kennard got traded to the Phoenix Suns. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, trade deadline is Thursday for everyone wanting to know. So we're recording this Tuesday night. So if there are any other trades, we will talk about it next week. Uh, the trade talks are heating up between Minnesota, Golden State. The big men seem to be in trade talks. It seems like the Warriors are really trying to get rid of D'Angelo Russell and flip him for a big man so that next year when Curry comes or comes back and Clay Thompson's back, they could have that elite big man that they were kind of missing. But um, you know, let me see. So De- Detroit and Phoenix traded Kennard. And who'd they get back? So, Javon Carter, Ellie, Eli, Okobo, Okobo, and a first-round pick. That is odd. Yeah, that's a weird trade. First-round pick for Luke Kennard, or Kennard. Definitely weird. <laughs> is he worth a first? I don't know what year the first-round pick. He's not bad. I've played him on my FanDuel a couple of times because of how low he's priced. But he's pretty consistent. There's been some games where he scored some good numbers. Uh, especially if, like, Derrick Rose sits. Yeah. And obviously Blake Griffin's hurt, right? So he's not he's not bad. Overall, he's actually a pretty solid player. Uh, young. Uh, worth a first-round pick? Uh, maybe, I guess. I don't know. I wouldn't say a first-round pick, but... Yeah, it, it really depends on where the Suns end up. I don't, I can't tell you if it's protected or not. Wojnowski didn't really tweet out too much about the deal. He just said who is basically involved. And with the NBA, you can protect picks. I wouldn't expect it to be protected though. But the Phoenix Sun, they're twenty and thirty, which puts them. They're about middle of the pack right now. They're currently 12th in the West, and they would be 9th in the East if they got moved to the East. So That's usually how it works in the so NBA. So they're, they're somewhat at, towards the end of the lottery, which you aren't missing out much. If your pick was top five, then you should hold on to that pick. Also, like I said, I don't know what the year is. I'm just going to assume it's next year based off um, what I'm seeing. We're, I'm not really seeing confirmation. Usually I look for Woj. Woj is the guy. Oh, I guess they're in trade talks. It's a, Yeah, I'm seeing the trade offer. So it's not complete yet, but they, they've they been in talks for quite some time. Yeah, they're expected to talk again today, which... But as you said, trade deadline's Thursday, so chances are it could happen tonight, tomorrow, maybe Thursday. Usually deadline's, what, 2 p.m. Central time? Yeah. So there's, I know there's some players on the block, um, you know, there's been rumors about, um, you know, like obviously Kennard and some other players. I don't even know. Derek Rose was like rumor. I, that's like to the Lakers, to the Lakers maybe. Um, He'd be great on the Lakers. They would help out. He would help out a lot. I think he would come off the bench, help out that team. I don't know what they would give up. I think Caldwell Pope would be involved in that deal. But nothing's really gained traction so far. Knicks, Knicks are looking. They're eyeing uh, Kyle Kuzma, who at this point I thought Kuzma was going to be an X factor coming off the bench for the Lakers. No, hasn't really done much. He's uh, he dyed his hair, which is pretty cool. It's probably his highlight of the uh, <laughs> he, highlight, he literally highlighted his highlight hair of the season, right? And um, 
I think he's a great player. If he goes to New York, I think that'd be huge. Mm. Um, he's young. He's a great player. Um, yeah, he doesn't fit in with that team, especially with Dwight Howard having such a good year. Exactly. Like, Kuzma's more of a power forward, but they tried playing him at they the play, small forward they, position. Uh, he's like a stretch forward because of his size. He can play the three. Uh, he's generally a four because of his height. But he's one of those guys who can pull long range or if he wants to play mid range to inside, he can do it all. Um, they can get a lot for him. I wouldn't be surprised if they get a draft pick. Um, but it would be cool to see him team up. He'll play way more in New York. He'll be playing with R.J. Barrett, some other guys. I know Morris is there who's pretty uh, playing pretty well this year. Um, and then there's, you know, the Warriors apparently are Mitchell listening. Mitchell Robinson. Yeah, Mitchell Robinson in New York. Uh, Warriors are listening to trade offers for D'Angelo Russell. Um, are they going to trade him? Who knows? I mean, at this point. I think they will. It's just. I don't see why not. Yeah. You know, you're going to get Steph Curry back. You're going to get Klay Thompson back. Uh, those are your two guards right there. I, I guess you could run a three-guard set, which is would work. Yeah, Thompson could play small forward. But Thompson could play small. Yeah, yeah but He's a little small for that position. I feel like he's for, a good defender, though. For how much they can get for D'Angelo Russell, because D'Angelo Russell can ball. He's yeah. good. They can get a lot for him, whether if it's a first-round pick uh, with a player. Two great, uh, one great player mixed with a you know a, a, a draft pick, whatever it may be. Yeah, they're really trying to go after a good center. They haven't really ever had a good center in their uh, like window that they've had. They've ran that small run and gun offense, which has been effective. But I think they're trying to get that good center to match up with Curry and Thompson, and then Draymond Green as well Draymond's kind of been okay but he thrives off of the team that he's around he's not he can get you the assists he's a good team player yeah he's a great team player all around fills the stat sheet but like you said when Steph Curry's in when Klay Thompson's in you have teams focused on these guys and Mm -hmm. then Draymond could just step in and play just be, be the be the Dennis Rodman out there play ruthless be you know, uh, obviously he can shoot the three sometimes, not so much. I wouldn't trust him to shoot the three ball very much, but he's just an overall great player, mm-hmm. a good player, excuse me, not great player, overall good player, uh, who this year hasn't really done much. But this team, I feel like they're just trying to find their future right now. Who's going to step up? Who's playing well? Who can they trade? And also their season's kind of like thrown away right now. They are 12 and 39. Uh, they would currently have the number one pick, or they would have the a good chance to end up with the number one pick if the season ended today. So they should try to move D'Angelo, get that value for him, get something back. They're focused on next year. No way they're making the playoffs. These guys that are out aren't going to like come back in time. And it would be sick if they could end up with the number one pick. They could get that big man, and they come out next year as one of the best teams in the NBA. Steph Curry and Klay Thompson on your roster playing automatically makes your team that much better. Top 10 potential. I think if they're playing right now with the team that they have, including D'Angelo Russell, they would easily flip that whole record around. Maybe a few more losses, but but yeah, so again, we have trade deadline coming up. We're going to touch base next week on the trades that do happen, if any happen. You know how it is. They like to hype it up, and then we end up trading, um, you know, my bench player for cash and a couple draft picks. You know, nothing crazy. Um, we da- had- Damian no one- Lillard went balled out this past week. Damian Lillard's been balling out for the past couple weeks, and right now, I know we were talking about it before we started, and I was like, for one. I played you in 2K using Portland because of the game he's <laughs> the games he's been playing. Worst mistake I ever played in my uh, made in my life. But anyways, aside from that, he's been balling out. Dame Lillard to me right now is the best player in a two week span. Right, he's always been a top point guard, but for somebody that's stepping up the way he is, um, definitely is one of the best scores. And they've been winning games. So they've been winning here and there. Um, you know, obviously when they're all on, when Carmelo gets back, obviously from, I don't know if he even came back yet after the the passing of Kobe, that was, you know, a good friend of his. Um, once he comes back, he's going to add to that to that roster and uh, what they already have going. So, yeah, speaking of that, last week, or, yeah, last week, 
on Friday, I think it was, the Portland Trailblazers played the Lakers, the first game for the Lakers since the passing of Kobe. That opening ceremony had me in tears. Saturday night, yeah. It was Saturday? It ended up being a, yeah, it was a Saturday night game. Oh, wow. Yeah. I only remember because I was off that day. <laughs> but, yeah, I remember uh, texting you. I was like, dude, are you watching this right now? Because they had the guy playing the, the – was it the cello or whatever? Yeah, they had Usher do Usher. Amazing Grace. They had the guy playing the cello. And then they had, like, a movie of Kobe pretty much, like, talking about himself and describing, like, his career. And, oh, my God, that was that was when it finally set in that he was gone. Yeah. And it, I was – it was like I was watching a funeral. It was, it was like I was at the funeral. It was literally like a funeral. Uh, Staples Center, There's obviously it's always a packed house. Um, seeing LeBron and all the other athletes out there who knew Kobe or looked up to Kobe, which is like 99% of the world, you know, you could see um, how affected they were by it. And LeBron obviously showing his emotion and uh, his, pre- his, his speech that he gave, I give him props. He, it's not easy. Yeah, like you, you're going up there. You're speaking on behalf of your friend, uh, and for the organization, and for the organization, and um, you know, give him props for having the cards that were given to him for how, what he was supposed to say, and he basically said no, like I'm not going to do that. He's like, I know they want me to get on track, but I'm not going to read off these cards. Um, emotional speech again. Give him props. It wasn't easy. Um, definitely, definitely was getting emotional myself watching it. Watch it with my girlfriend. We were sitting there, and you know, and I didn't watch the whole game. I didn't even watch the halftime show, but oh I was on Twitter. God. And you know, obviously, they did uh, "See You Again" with oh, Khalifa and Charlie Puth, and I think I teared up more during that. Yeah, um, just because you know that song was made for you know Fast and Furious and Paul Walker, who for me was one of my favorite actors. So I was just like, I started spiraling. I was losing it, and um, all, overall, they did well. They did very well with the ceremony and, you know, and, and you know, contributions to, to Kobe. And the game was for Kobe. And I thought the Lakers were going to come out and win. LeBron, uh, they were down at five or six points, had probably the crossover of the year. He missed. And he missed a three. He missed a three. And I know Kobe's looking down. <laughs> He's looking down saying, you don't have the Mamba mentality. He's like, I would have hit that. Yeah. And they ended up losing the game because there was like a minute and mm-hmm. like a minute left, a minute 30 left. I thought LeBron was going to drop like 85 points after that speech and what that game was. Anthony Davis had 18 points in the first quarter. Anthony Davis balled out. He had a great game. It slowed down, obviously, because he only ended up with, like, 30 points or just under 30 points. Um, but, yeah, that Portland, uh, Dame Lillard. Dame Lillard balled out. The whole team stepped up. Um, and for them to step up and Hassan Whiteside played well and to beat this Lakers team, I've been saying it. They're, I don't even know if they're um, an eighth-seeded team yet, but they will end up as a playoff team. And they're going to make a run. They're ninth right now, two games back. Two games back. They're going to make a run. They will make a run. Mark my words. I know I've been saying it for the Bulls, but the Bulls are in the East. Trailers have a little bit more of a difficult task, but I believe overall as a team, they're a lot more complete than what than where they're actually sitting right now. Uh, especially again once they get Melo back, who's been heating up, who's been more consistent. Um, you know that veteran. They're having that veteran in that lineup who. Not a lot of veterans his age can play as well as he is at his age. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think they will be a, a playoff team. And, you know, beating the Lakers was huge on that type of stage. Um, obviously, the guys playing in that game, I'm sure it's difficult. Emotions are running high. Um, but but overall, I give Dame Lillard, uh, I tip my hat to him for how he's been playing the last couple of weeks. And I don't think he'll win MVP, but, I mean, who's to say he doesn't keep balling out the way he is and he leads this team to the playoffs. That is an MVP player. Um, but then again, you have Luka and you have, obviously, Giannis, who is probably going to win back-to-back. Um, but overall, again, back to Dame, great player. <laughs> The All-Star Game format, did we talk about that last week? We did not talk about it. So the format this year, if you want, you can you can go over that. I know, so each quarter starts 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, these teams are playing for charity basically on a quarter basis. Uh, if 
LeBron's team wins the first quarter. They get $100,000 for their charity. Uh, if they lose the second quarter, then Giannis's team. Is Giannis and LeBron, right, for the captains? or Giannis versus, yeah, Giannis versus LeBron. Oh, yeah, because LeBron's in the West. I yeah. don't know. I, I was like, who's the West guy? And I forgot. Um, yeah, Giannis, if they win the second quarter, then Giannis's team gets 100000 And then the third quarter, whoever wins that, they get 100000 And then the fourth quarter, the scores go back, like they add up all the scores, so it's technically the score after three quarters. And then whoever has the highest total in the game, uh, they need 24 points in the fourth quarter to win. The other team needs to make up the difference that they're behind and uh, get that 24 points. So it'll be a set ending. The fourth quarter won't be time-based. It's just going to strictly be who can get to that 24 points first, which in an all-star game, that 24 points should be pretty pretty quick. quick. And also, the jerseys. Do they do it for uh, Gianna and Kobe? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, it's 24 and 2. Okay. Yeah, 24 and 2. So is it, if I'm not mistaken, is it one team's wearing 24, the other team's wearing 2? I I think think LeBron's wearing 2. Okay. And Giannis is wearing 24. I think that's awesome. I think that's the best thing they could have done. Um, it's it's here. It's in Chicago. It's making me want to go. <laughs> so, oh, man. It's so expensive, and it's probably rising as yeah, we speak. Yeah, I'm sure it is, especially with uh, the tragic news recently and what they're going to be doing. Um, but, yeah, so I think one thing I want to touch base on with the NBA, again, I'm not the biggest all-star game fan. Uh, the voting is weird. One, I'm happy Taco Falls not in the All Star game. Um, <laughs> two, I'm not happy about the snubs. Um, first of all, how Devin Booker is not an All Star. I don't get it, and I know he's in Phoenix. The market for that team is not great, but you're telling me a guy who can average almost 28 points a game, who can average six and a half assists a game. This is a guy who put up. 60 something points a couple years ago. Young kid who's balling out. I think he put up 70. 70, yeah, he put up 70 points. Gets snubbed. I'm not buying that. Call I, th- I think he's like the highest points per game like ever being snubbed. And also well, no. Bradley Beal Bradley who has Beal, a higher one. 28.6 points per game, averaging the same amount of assists. He's two and a half three pointers a game. I mean, Steph Curry's averaged more, but, like, he is balling out. He's balling out. Yeah, him and Devin Booker are, like, the highest points per game ever snubbed from an All-Star game. How? I don't care about their team's record. You want the best players, people who are having the best first halves of the year, you can't not include these guys. You're going to vote in Kemba Walker as a starter. Kemba's not a bad player, don't get me wrong. He's averaging 22 and 5. Right? This mm-hmm. team wins. Guess what? That team is great. That's a damn good basketball team. And you're going to snub out Bradley Beal? Even as like a reserve. As a reserve? Like you're telling me he averages almost 29 points a game and he's not an all-star. You're going to let in um Chris Middleton. You're going to let in Kyle Lowry, who Kyle Lowry is not bad, but he's not as good. He's not having as good of a season. Van Van Fleet is actually having a pretty good year, almost as good as Lowry. Um, De- Demontis Sabonis, he's actually doing pretty well. When I first saw that he made the All Star game, I was questioning that, but he is averaging like thirteen boards a game. He's doing pretty well with Indiana. Chris Paul's an All Star. Weird. Weird. Um. Like, Those, no, no, sh- no shot at Chris Paul. It's just odd how he went to the Thunder and he still was Chris Paul esque and made the All Star team. Yeah, and his numbers aren't even that great. But it's again, it's it's household name, right? Those are those guys are always gonna make it. Shout out to Brandon Ingram. Definitely deserves to be in the All Star game. Um, Jason Tatum's having a hell of a year. Um, everybody else that's a starter is well deserved. Luca, James Harden, Anthony Davis, LeBron. Uh, Giannis, Joel Embiid, Kawhi Leonard, um, Pascal Siakam, uh, not Kemba Walker. 
Um, Cardiac Kemba, as they call mm-hmm. him. Trey Young. Yeah, Chris Paul this season is actually averaging six, 17.1, 5.1, and 6.6. That's it. Which Devin Booker has six assists. He has 27 points. I don't know how many rebounds he grabs, but comparing a guard number to a Chris guard? Paul, yeah. how does how does Booker not get in over here over him? Uh, Bam, Adebayo, Adebayo, whatever, however you say his name, 15 points a game and 10 boards. He's a beast. He's good, but is he? I mean, you're going to tell me Carl Anthony Towns, who's I know they're in different conferences. But Carl Anthony Towns is a snub, averaging 27 points a game. Um, let's see. Let's actually look at his numbers. He's averaging 27 points a game, almost 11 rebounds a game, just under a block and a half a game. I, I don't get it. And I know they say, you know, fan voting doesn't control it all. But at some point, you got to let or, – or Zach Levine? Yeah. Zach Levine has been the human highlight for Chicago. Somebody who I said he was not going to be as good as he is or isn't the future for the Bulls. Let me take that back. Isn't the future for the Bulls. Has been proven night in and night out. Three three 40-point games in January. Um, 25 points a game. How he doesn't get voted in as an all-star in his own city that he's playing in I don't understand that. So, again, that's just me speaking out loud on the All-Star Game, why I'm not the biggest fan of it. Mm -hmm. Um, I am going to more than likely watch it this year only because of the purpose behind it and the charities. And the format change. The format change. It's going to be nice to see. Um, Of course, on top of that, uh, we have the All-Star Weekend in whole. So we have the three-point contest, slam dunk contest, uh, which they pretty much – announced who's going to be um in the three point contest in the um dunk contest the uh the rising stars challenge and the uh, the skills competition um let's see i know in the nba uh Zach Levine just announced he's going to be in the three point contest speaking of the three point contest they there's uh, a format change so normally there's five racks at two in the corners two at the wings, and then one straight up. Uh, players get to choose what rack is full of money balls. So they, they have an additional, they have a good chance of getting 10 points on a certain rack. This year, there's going to be two more shots added to uh, what's already like there. So there's 25 shots. Normally, they're adding two more. So there's going to be 27 total. They're adding 10 more seconds onto the clock. So it should free up some more time. And uh, the two shots that they're adding are six feet behind the three-point line. So you get a chance to hit some deep threes. And those balls are worth three points each. So a little, if a guy's down towards the end, he has a chance to hit like the two money or long grain shots and end up winning over someone else. It just adds more excitement. Yeah, I'm actually excited for that. I usually like the three-point contest. Those guys do try. I mean, how do you not try in a three-point contest? Dame Lillard, Buddy Heald. I'm a huge fan of Buddy. Trey Young, Joe Harris, Duncan Robinson. It's not bad. Zach Levine, Devontae Graham, and Davis Burtons. Um, I think with the two extra balls that they're going to have for the three points, I expect Dame. Trey Young, Trey Young to light it up, and even Buddy Heel. Buddy Heel can do; he could ball. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I know that um, there's the dunk contest. Zach Levine said he's not going to do it. Um, which we have Dwight Howard in that. We have um, Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon. I'm looking forward to Aaron Gordon in that. Derek Jones Jr. Was yep. he in one before? He, I feel like he was, I believe. All he right, can so, fly. So we have a couple returning guys in the dunk contest. Yes. I wish Zion was in it. And I don't know if they can have a late add at this point. That would be my recommendation. Add him to it and somehow convince Zach Levine. But so, so they have a bunch of forwards and then they have Pat Con- Connaughton. Connaughton, yep. Uh with Milwaukee. I expect him. 
I don't, know, I don't expect much from him. I was looking at his dunk highlights, wasn't amused. Dwight Howard obviously won the dunk contest before when he was 20 years younger. <laughs> Not literally, but um, we'll see what Dwight Howard can do. Um, I'm, I, it's going to be between Eric uh, Gordon, Derek Jones Jr. Both those guys can jump out of the building. Um, so that'll be okay to watch. Um, I'm not completely sold on the talent in the dunk contest. Um, and then there's going to be the uh, skills. skills competition, yep. which includes a few forwards and then a, a bunch of guards. So the guards are Patrick Beverly. Should he be in it? I don't know. Uh, you have Spencer Dinwiddie, Chris Middleton, Derek Rose. Derek Rose. Uh, I think there's eight guys. Yeah, so those are the guards right there. And then you have, for the forwards, Jason Tatum is considered one. You have Pascal Siakam, DeMontis Sabonis, and then uh, Bam at Adebayo. I I think that's good. I like that. I like that they have Derrick Rose in Chicago mm-hmm. doing D. something. Rose and Levine. At least they're involved in some, some way. Some way, yeah. It's unfortunate they won't be in the game, but at least they're involved. Especially D. Rose. Yeah. He's had such a good year, and coming back to Chicago... Kind of a bad exit with Chicago based off his injuries, but Chicago loves him. Yeah, maybe bring him in as like an honorary all-star, <laughs> all-star E. Um, but yeah, so then that's that. And then, of course, you have the Rising Stars Challenge, which is like the the first two years, those guys in the league, which obviously we know who those are. And then um, Celebrity All-Star Game, they do that Friday as well. So I think I'm going to be watching Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. I'll be watching both. Friday, I won't probably be watching at all, but... Yeah, I might tune in for the, like, Rising Stars game, because there's a decent bit of good players there, but... Wendell Carter's in it, so I'll be looking forward to that, seeing some highlights there. Wendell Carter's not bad. I think playing with the young talent, he'll, he should be able to thrive a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if Markinen, Markinen got hurt, so he probably isn't going to play... Um, and then, of course, there's John Morant. I think Markinen might be in his third season. Is he in his third now? Oh, he is. Yeah, he's definitely in his third season. Yeah, he, he's been in the league a couple of years now. Yeah. So, but yeah, John Morant. We'll probably see Zion. So, I don't know. Maybe it'll be worth watching a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it with basketball. Um, so, we touch base. You know, obviously, there's a format change. A lot, of, a lot going on with the All-Star Weekend. Trade deadline. I'll have my ticker on. Um, I don't know. Maybe the Bulls will make a move. We'll see. Um, but that's that's pretty much it. Um, and after All Star Game is when teams truly start to grind. So, oh my God, the Dodgers have agreed to a deal with Boston Red Sox that would send star Mookie Betts and starter David Price to the Dodgers. No way. Thirteen minutes ago. 13 minutes ago, there could be a third team involved, but Mookie Betts and David Price are going to the Dodgers. Didn't the Red Sox and Mookie Betts just beat the Dodgers two years ago? Yeah. Wow. Oh my goodness. Luckily, I checked Twitter right before uh, we ended the podcast. That's huge. I was looking at Woj's tweets too, and he retweeted Jeff Passant. So, oh my goodness. So he confirmed it. We thought we weren't talking about baseball this I know, week. we were just talking about it. We said, wow, this is like the first, maybe second time we didn't talk about baseball. That's a crazy trade. Mookie Betts is great. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. Uh, the Red Sox, they're looking to cut payroll. They get rid of David Price, who will be great. You know, you know the, you know the, the Dodgers, they love their lefty they starters, they their do. lefty bats. The big one, though, Mookie Betts. He is a free agent next season, though. So they're they're playing for a championship. They're renting him. Yeah. Potentially. They're, they're pretty much renting him. And even with the Red Sox, Mookie Betts said, I'm entering free agency. I want to see what I'm worth. So that's why it kind of took a little bit. And, yeah, Mookie Betts going to the Dodgers. That is huge. I'm curious to know who the Red Sox got in return. Or what money, what, I mean, prospects maybe Mookie Betts the year before in 2018 he really won a sick year 346 32 home runs batted in 80 RBIs this is a guy who he was a leadoff and he's a leadoff hitter 
How many bags did he steal? Didn't he steal like 30 bags? Or am I wrong? Mm-hmm. Maybe he doesn't steal as many. Last year, 295, still pretty good. 29 home runs, again, 80 RBIs, walked more. He sold 30 in 2018. So he did. He was mm-hmm. part of the 30 30 club. Yep. 27 years old. Defense isn't bad. His defense is great. Yeah. He's a good defensive outfielder. And I think they might play him in center field or they might play Cody Ballinger. Either way, Mookie Betts and Cody Ballinger in the outfield, they are great defensively. Yeah. yeah. And, and adding a right handed bat to that lineup, they're going to have him, Cody Ballinger, Corey Seeger. Corey Seager might be involved in that deal. I don't know. Maybe. Um, I don't see him being involved in that deal just because they have Xander and Raphael Devers. We don't know the details at the moment, but they're going to have Corey Seager. Gavin Lux is coming up, another lefty. Will Smith is going to catch third base. You have Justin Turner. Justin Turner is always You have Max good. Muncy on that team. Jock Peterson and Kike Hernandez, the, the platoon there. Guys who can all hit oh bombs. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And they won 106 games last year. Let's not forget that. Yeah. They already won 106 games last year. And the rotation, they lost to Ryu, but they're going to have Kershaw, Walker Bueller, Hinjin Ryu. They signed someone else. They, they lost Hinjin Ryu. Or uh, David Price. David Price, yeah. They, David Price right David there. Price. They signed someone else this offseason, though. The Dodgers, let's see. Free agent signings. This is happening as we... They have Dustin May, who you called up. They, they saw Maeda? Uh, yeah. We'll see. He's usually like fourth, maybe fifth starter. Oh, they picked up uh, Blake Trine and They signed Alex Wood. Uh, they signed Jimmy Nelson to a small deal. He was a starter type player so he might be in their bullpen now they might move him to that role but yeah they they have three great starters again dustin may who's a young guy if he could improve this year he could definitely be that good fourth starter that they have oh my goodness mookie bats man so do you would you say they're the favorites next year Depending, depending who they traded away i could see him going back to the world series yet again Oh, Jock Peterson would go from the Dodgers to the Angels if the blockbuster is completed. So this is a three-team trade. Yeah. Dude, I don't know what is going on right now. Let me let me check out Ken Rosenthal. So the third team still identified uh significant cash would go from Red Sox to the Dodgers cuz David Price is owed ninety six million. Oh man! Over the next three years, Mookie Betts is owed twenty seven. Jock Peterson going to the Angels. Uh, Alex Verdugo, the big piece, would go to Boston. He was great in the outfield last year. Good young outfielder. They would have like five or six years of control. So the the Red Sox would be getting an MLB player back who's solid. I don't know who's who else is involved though. Third team though. So Jock Peterson more than likely is traded. So yeah. there's the one and the cash that we talked about. So, yeah, we just got to stay tuned and see what happens. That's, wow. I guess we'll fully go over this next week, but Mookie Betts, Mookie he's Betts. a Dodger. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I'm I'm excited for baseball. I'm super excited. Pitchers and catchers pit- report next, next week. week. Yeah, so baseball never ends. Baseball literally never ends. Um, of course, me as a South Sider Sox fan, I'm looking forward to the year that uh, we're going to have. Um, playoff run, maybe. I don't know. But just to see this team develop even further is going to be fun. And then to see teams like the Dodgers pull off blockbuster trades like this, it makes baseball fun. Oh my this is what goodness. I like. Oh yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for episode number 15. 15. Next week, we'll talk about the trades that have happened and also the full Mookie Betts trade and also some other trades that the Dodgers seem to be making with Jock Peterson and who all is involved. Uh, Thanks to everyone that has listened, especially this far into the podcast. Yeah. 
this was not expected. Um, make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts. Uh, download the episodes. Leave a rating. Give us five stars. Subscribe. Uh, watch the YouTube channel if you prefer to watch us live. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this week. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Healy Six. And then, of course, you can follow me on Instagram at iGoose. That's with four O's. And again, don't forget, if you do listen to us and you are a supporter, download the episode. We can see that, and it kind of lets us gauge, you know, where we're going with this. So, so I want to thank you guys again, and we'll see you next week.